whenever you're ready, let us know. We, it's filming. Okay, so tell us how Overseas ACA got started. I just begin. Yes, go ahead. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, OACAC, the idea for founding an organization for counselors overseas began in uh, 1980 in Brussels. There was an ECIS conference, and present at that conference was the uh, executive secretary of NACAC, uh, Charlie Ma Marshall. And he was very interested in this idea, but uh, <clears throat> he went back to the States, and he was nobody was very interested in having an ACAC which was overseas. And so we started struggling. We had a meeting with Gray Matton, who was then the executive secretary of ECIS, and we started talking with Jean Wallet, who was the best counselor of all time. He was at the International School of Geneva, and it was his idea, really, that we should start this, because he felt that our concerns overseas were so different from the counselors in the States. And he was determined to bring it to the notice of, the, of NACAC that there was this great difference of financial aid and all the other things, our programs, everything was so different from what was happening in the States. So we had a long talk with uh, Charlie Marshall and he went back, I think it was in, uh, I can't remember where it was, it was somewhere in Virginia, I think at that time, uh, the basis of NACAC, and, um, <clears throat> but it was rejected immediately by the board of OACAC, uh, of ACAC, NACAC, because they were not at all in agreement with having this group of overseas student uh, counsellors coming into NACAC. And so things dragged on for a little bit. And then uh, Charlie Marshall went and he was replaced by Frank Burtnett, who became the executive secretary. And I decided to ask Frank Burtnett to come to The Hague, where we had a conference, to meet our counsellors, to get an idea of how different we were from what was happening in the States. So Frank Burnett came and he was thrilled to bits. He said, what a wonderful group of counselors you've got overseas. We must get you into NACAC. And so Frank put up the idea again. And again, it was rejected very heavily by the board. The stumbling block most of the time seemed to be that in ECIS, we had lots of proprietary schools. And of course, you know, in the States, there's a tremendous prejudice against proprietary schools. But in Europe, that is quite different. The proprietary schools are very often amongst the best schools uh, in ECIS. Uh, but we couldn't convince people that this was so. Proprietary schools were absolutely anathema to everybody in the States. And then Frank put it to the uh, board, and again it was rejected. And I said to Sandy Jameson, who was a representative in the State Department for International Education, and I said to Sandy, I'm absolutely sick of this thing. I've been struggling now for six years. I'm not getting anywhere. It's no good trying to do anything. And he said, <clears throat> you mustn't do that. You mustn't give up because we have now a woman, Joyce Smith, who's the executive secretary. And she's very, very keen on having this added dimension to NACAC. So he said, please go on. And so I went on and I was joined at that point by Ted Washbourne who was in a, school, in a school in Turkey. And together we struggled and we wrote our articles and we did everything. The only solution, this was Didi Faulkner, who was the membership um, head of NACAC, she had the idea that if we could change the amendment so that somehow proprietary schools could be worked into this new organization, that we could get it passed. So in 1992, this was 12 years I'd been struggling to try and form OACAC, never got anywhere. And in 1992, we had a conference, I think it was 1992, in Los Angeles. And there the proposed amendment was put to the annual general meeting. And there were two or three people who uh, proposed uh, that it should, we should be rejected again, but there were several who spoke for us, particularly some of the uh, colleges like uh, Doug Thompson, Shep Sandy, they got up and said what fine schools we had in Europe. And the idea to get around the proprietary school situation was that anybody who was accredited by ECIS uh, could belong to uh, OACAC. Now,